For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh is enmity towards Elohim, for it does not subject itself to the Torah of Elohim, neither indeed is it able. He just clarified it right there. You can take the word Torah out, it still says the same thing. For it does not subject itself to the law of Elohim. What's the law of Elohim called? The Torah. And those who are in the flesh are unable to please Elohim. He's explaining the internal struggle. He is not lashing out, lashing out against the Torah. There are two laws struggling inside of you. The one that you've had your whole life and the one that you're trying to embrace that's coming from an outside source. The one that's coming from the inside, the one that's coming from the outside. You have to choose to bring the one from the outside, the law of Yahweh, into the inside. That's why he talked about in the heart of the matter, so many of the parts talked about taking the law and laying it up in your heart taking it and embracing it and bringing it into your heart. Because you already got that law of sin and death going. That You were born, and boom, that just took right over. It's called self-sovereignty. We're not calling it original sin. We're not calling that. It says you were born with the understanding at some point and recognizing that you have authority over yourself. It usually happens somewhere close to age two, which is why we call them the terrible twos. When they start to realize, I have authority over me. And then the rest of their life is wrestling to grab that authority, only to find out that at some point you need to give up that authority. But I want to say this very clearly. I think I said it before, I'll say it again. You can't truly submit yourself until you get you under control. You need full self-sovereignty to give up that sovereignty. What do I mean by that? Some of you have best friend sovereignty, Mom sovereignty, older brother sovereignty, dad sovereignty, old pastor sovereignty, all mixed in with your sovereignty sitting on that throne. You need to get rid of all those other authorities, get it grabbed fully into you, and then you hand it over to Yeshua. But you're still being ruled by other people that you've given authority to in your lives. You have given over authority to other, other entities, other, other, other members of your world. It could be a, a parent, a friend, a, a sibling, an empl- a, a coworker, an employer, whatever. You've given authority. Take it all back and then hand it over voluntarily to your Messiah. That's what you need to do. Some of you are struggling to hand over authority to Messiah because you really don't have the authority. You're still sharing it with everybody else. Take it away from all of them. Stop, because I know you do. (laughs) I know you still have the problem. Why? Because you call me. Oh, but mom or my brother or this one or that one. Well, why do they have any authority? Why does what they say, what they feel, or what they think about what you're doing make that much difference? I know it's important to you not to have them mad at you, but if you're still considering letting what they say get in the way of what he says, they've got authority they shouldn't have. Do you understand? You've given them authority they should not have. But the boss says, if I don't come in, he's going to fire me. So what? Get another job. Oh, but that's going to be so, such a pain in the neck and then blah, blah. So, who says, so what? When did he promise you it was all going to be smooth sailing when you came into this? I read where he said, if you follow me, you have to bear your own stake. If you follow me, mother versus sister and brother and kid and all that stuff might happen. Not because he wanted it to happen, but because it might happen. But you need to grab a hold of that sovereignty so that you can turn it over fully to him.